Good morning, good morning. Please help me. The beast, she's crazy this morning. Go. That is number 40, maybe. I've just been sitting here. She's in a mood, people. I don't know what to do. She's controlling my life. Somebody come get her. Take her for a 10-mile walk. Under the pews you go. Here she comes. Hang on. Do, 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 the little freight train. She loves that ball, man. That is a child's toy. That is not a dog ball. We have had it for nearly a year, maybe a year, maybe more. But it is a child's toy. Ow, you little crazy thing. She's been this way since we got here. There she goes. Number 42. So anyway, I'm Brian Warner, believe it or not. I'm on the other end of this thing. And this is turning on the lights for Monday morning. June something. June 24? Man, oh man, oh man, we are into summertime. Where'd you go? Did anybody see her down there? You let me know if you see her. You see her? What's she do? Oh, look at her. She's taking her ball and gone home. Oh, here she comes. Okay, all right. I love you, babe. Yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. Get your ball. She says, no, it's daddy. It's time for turning on the lights. Now it's not time for me to play. See, she's a good girl. That's Pastor Susie. If you are friends with me on the Commission of Credentialing and Placement, we've got to figure out a time to get Susie in there so that she can get her credentials in the churches of God. We've got to make her legit. We don't want people pastoring in our churches that are not credentialed with us. And that's one of our tenets, right? That's one of the things that we're really, really working on taking care of. And uh, so we need to get, uh, find a time for Pastor Susie because she does a lot around here. She does a lot. She does a lot of teaching. That's my nose. Did you like that? She does a lot of loving. She does a lot of pastoring around here. So anyway, that's where it is. Check it out. There's the church. Nobody's on. I'm beginning to wonder if the whole live stream thing is working. We've had trouble with the internet. We have trouble with the internet when it gets hot. We have trouble with the LTE signal. I've had trouble with my phone. There it is. There's the mega church that is the Churchtown Church of God. I'll tell you what's going to happen this week. I am going to be working on the next five services because July is such a crazy month with travel, vacation, triennial conference. I'm going to be pounding out as many episodes for the radio as I can right here, my brothers and sisters, right here. Still good news today. We're going to be working from the pulpit. <clears throat> a couple of different guest speakers this month. It is nice to change it up. It is nice for someone else, to, for them to hear somebody else's voice. I don't know if I have a signal. Nobody is on. Sometimes when I do this, there's Rick. Are you getting a signal and every, is everything going okay, Rick? Because I've been on for like five minutes. So you're the first person. So I'm wondering how it's coming through. Send me a message, Rick. Sending out an SOS. Oh, here's Dale. Let me know how the signal is coming through. I ask because we've been on for a while and I've been talking to my phone. My dog thinks I'm crazy. Shocker, I know. Sending out a... Oh, I guess we're getting a signal. So why don't we go ahead and pray? We'll talk about what we want to talk about this morning. Oh, okay. I just caught people all... Everybody in the bathroom. Happens to me all the time. You ever get that phone call? I shouldn't talk about this when we're looking at the altar. Father God, we love you and we appreciate you. Thank you for... Oh, thank you for life and life everlasting. Thank you for who you are, Lord. And thank you for who we are as your children. Lord, let your will be done in our lives. We mean it. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. That's number one rule. There she is. She's calming down. She knows that I'm on. Turning on the lights. 
Good morning and welcome to Turning on the Lights. Hold on a second, I got a... Uh, good heavens to Murgatroyd, everything's a mess. Look, this is a mess. I want you to know a couple of things. Here's what I need your help with. One, again, look at that. See, the brightness is, I'm backlit. I need to be front lit. So in super sunny mornings, there's a problem, isn't there? <coughs> Can you see me okay? Should I turn around? Good morning, Barbara Marais. Uh, I'm saying hi to everybody, look. So should I turn around and let the sun, let the sun shine? Good morning, Liz, in. You wanna come up? The first thing is, if you're watching this and you're a member of the Credentialing and Placement Commission, we got to figure out how to get Pastor Susie licensed. I said that we, you know, one of our tenants is we do not want people. Thank you, Dale. I feel fabulous. 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 Come here, babe. Okay. Good morning, Bill. Um, I'm trying to say hi to Bill. We don't want pastors working in the churches of God that are not credentialed, so we've got to figure that out. The second thing is, Bill, hey, Bill, I ordered our new streaming hardware last night. It was, it was kind of funny. Hmm, that's weird. It, there's been all kinds of weird stuff. Fa fabulous, honey. All kinds of weird stuff with Facebook, notifications, um, comments, comments going hidden, all kinds of weird things. So we just got to keep searching, got to keep getting it out there. That's why I'm tagging a bunch of people. Again, if that annoys you, I am not doing it to annoy you. If you don't want it, let me know, boom. If you are here, and you watch every day, but you got to search for it and you want tagged, let me know. And we'll do it that way so as many people as would like to watch and or participate can find it easily. Also, I know I sound like a paparazzi salesman, but we can increase the footprint of this social media by interacting with it. Likes, uh, emojis, all of those different weird things, comments, and sharing it. And then the Facebook algorithm goes, oh, people are watching this. And it shoots it out to more and more of our friends even, even if you're tagged on it. So that's the way it works from what I understand, everything that I've read. Yeah, I, no doubt. No doubt. You know that you know, our uh, Sunday morning service was flagged for nudity because it has a picture of Jesus on the cross. Now, in all fairness to Facebook, they said, you've been flagged for nudity, here's the offense, and it's Jesus hanging on the cross with only a loincloth on. And uh, I wrote back, because the first, I guess the, <clears throat> the first notification is from electronic algorithms, whatever, electronic notification that it supposedly sees this. If you would like to respond to it, it will go to a human being. And I wrote, here's the church, here's the picture, you know, th this is what it is, and they let it go. So, in all fairness, uh, gotta give credit where credit is due, and it was due in that case. The person who read it could have been a flaming atheist, antichrist individual, maybe they were, and they still followed company policy, maybe they weren't. So, there you go. That was my Facebook story. Imagine, imagine all the people living, okay, stop. If you will, while preaching yesterday, I caught myself going a bit fast and actually moved my mouth and sounded out every word for like a whole minute. It worked, it does work. 
And when you see people like messing with their ear, uh, their uh, hearing aids or what have you, remember Pastor Susie running around with that empty water bottle? Just lift your chin up to the sky and preach, brother. Awesome. Hi, Bryn. Just be hell. I'm happy this morning. I was exhausted yesterday. Yesterday morning was exhausting. It's so strange, isn't it? I sit on a stool and I te the, the summertime is teaching preaching. Right? The teaching oftentimes lays the foundation for the preaching. And what we're doing here is going over fundamental Orthodox Christian doctrine. Like, what do we believe as Christians? <clears throat> and I think people, I think it's big. Bryn, did it make sense? Is it, you know, I, I really feel it's worthwhile. I just really feel we need to go beyond Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Let's go to the Bible and find out all that stuff is where I am. Right? And, and so we laid the foundation of determinism versus free moral agent. And I thought, oh, should I do this? You know, and we did it. And then we talked about Romans 6 and the idea that the Holy Spirit is preaching into the life of a saved person regarding this battle with the flesh that still occurs after we are saved. Because the flesh, you know, why do I still sin? Because I'm not dead yet, because I'm still in this flesh. And the battle with the flesh and feeding the flesh emotionally, physically, right? That includes sexually. That includes gluttony. That includes, right, emotionally and even... You will say spiritually, although not in a Christian spiritual manner, spiritually as in terms of what Romans teaches us. To whom or what you give your allegiance is, to, is whom or what you will be a slave to. Right? So spiritually, we are given over to worship, which can very, very easily become idol worship. All of those things are, are true. And, and Man, it's just amazing, <clears throat> about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and I uh, just was exhausted. I was exhausted through the prayer service. I was exhausted when I went home. I was exhausted through it all. <coughs> strange. It's a strange feeling, isn't it, pastors? You're just like uh, chewing on your tongue for four or five hours. <laughs> Hello, Anthony. Kristen? Outdoors, that's right. Nice to break up the monotony. Do so, sure. That we are, allow yeah. You got to just go for it. You know what I'm saying? You, Dennis, are the train that is leaving the station. Your congregation can get on that train, or they can. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got to be a little gentle, don't you? So, good morning, everybody. I do. I like to hear about your Sundays. I like to hear about your, um, I like to hear about what was preached in the churches. I like to, man, I like to listen to Dennis, and I like to listen to Jeff, and I like to listen, uh, you know, to uh, Joe, and I like to listen to Marcus putting them up. I, it just really refreshes me. I like preaching. And I don't mean I like preaching verb. I like preaching noun. I like to hear the word. That day you came in, Dale, and I sat there. It was like it was refreshing. I like to hear the word put forth, and, and uh, it's just you do, we just talked about. Dennis just said different, different perspectives, right? Different, something different. And it's my own voice droning on and on. That's what it feels like, right, pastors? Your Sunday morning, blah blah. This is what it sounds like in your ear. It may be powerfully affecting, but we lose track of that um, because it's just my voice, my voice, my voice, my voice, my voice, and you want to hear other voices. Like most pastors, I don't get out much. I keep threatening to come to Logan's church, uh, sorry, down to Dover, to fr friendship community, right, Logan? On a Saturday night service, I keep threatening to do that, haven't done it, all of those things. Don't get out much. So why not exercise this medium for one of its great, great benefits? 
one of its great, great benefits. It does, right? And Romans 6, do not let one part of your, do not give one part of your body over, over as an instrument of evil. Instead, give your whole body over to God through Jesus Christ, right? He will redeem that mess. And you say, yeah, but I've got this sin over here. And I just, he's got it. He will redeem it. And somehow, some way that is absolutely mind-boggling and mind-blowing, when, when you see it come to fruition, he will use it to glorify him and strengthen his kingdom. And I, I just gave a simple example yesterday of, of a man. Like, we men feel isolated, right? Because sometimes church is feminized, and we hear all of this feminine language about holding hands and loving and walking with and those sorts of things, and that has occurred over generations, and it has been a self-perpetuating cycle, right? As you, even in uh, denominations and congregations that believe only in male leadership, the rest of the leadership and the rest of the teaching it has become predominantly female. Song selection is feminized. The word is feminized. And that's like, it's not, I'm not saying this is... Uh, 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 this is a large umbrella type trend. And I know that I'm not speaking into every church. It's something to be aware of, right? But it lends itself then a self-perpetuating cycle to men who come in and hear about hugging and holding hands with another guy and this sort of thing and loving him and giving my life to him. And, and it's, mm, eh, mm, uh, mm. And, and, you know, that, those sorts of things. Now, that's, that's the discussion in a huge nutshell. But my point is men can already feel very isolated. And so when, if that man who is involved in this besetting sin, as we say, this recurring sin, um, feels like he is the only individual in the earth, on the earth, that is doing this. And... In that individual, this man may want to be a disciple of Christ, may, want, may have given his life to Christ, <clears throat> and, and, and living Romans 6, living Romans 7, when Paul says, I, I know what I ought to do, but I don't do it. Ah! Right? And this, I mean, feeding the flesh and keeps going back to the flesh. And then another Christian says, hey, brother, I've walked a mile in your shoes. What? Exactly. Exact same sin exact same desires and here's how I've handled it through the years you know and we talked about that going before the cross standing in front of that mirror praying right the power of God's Holy Spirit inside of you the God's will be done in your life and then taking one step forward see that old man is always there right the demon on the hill grabbing at your ankles the old man is always there but each and every day that we pray that prayer, Lord, your will, not mine, and we give ourselves over to it, we, we are empowered to take one step farther away from that old man. One step farther away from that old man. Old person, ladies. <laughs> and, and continue. That's where the terminology of Christian walk comes in. Relationship comes in. Powerful stuff. Not easy. In our very selfish nature, say, Lord, just fix this. I have chosen to follow you. I'm that cool. Fix this. I do that too. Fix it. Look, look at what I've given. I'm selfishly. Look at what I've given up for you. I've chosen to do this. I'm doing all these great things. Fix me. Eh, Romans 6, Romans 7. Power of God's Holy Spirit, transformation, walk, oh. I hear Joe Paterno's voice, do it the hard way first. That was his motto, so. Going back, there's Trevor Reese. I believe it is from the power of Holy Spirit breaking through us. Plays out, of, oh, we read that. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. We are example. Give your whole body over. Good morning, Miss Wanda. I hope you are well. Good morning, Miss Susan. Good morning, pray and praying was yesterday's message with Pastor John Cook at Mercersburg. P 
pray and praying and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. What gift? The free gift we're taught. The free gift is God's grace laid at our feet. Accept the gift. What comes with that? We open that up in prayer. Prayer in the presence of God. Right? Being able to be in that communication with God is a part of that gift. Oh, yes. <clears throat> oh, no. Yesterday was a tough day. One of the former progress pastors has fallen and folks are asking questions. I hear that loud and clear. I preached on the unknown God, Paul's description of God, Jesus. Do we know this God? Really know him? Do we know we are hiding nothing from him? Do we understand this is the God we serve? Um, this, as you know, pastors, my, if you listen to my sermon yesterday, you, you will understand exactly the cauldron from which it was motivated. And I speak very, very bluntly about how we are given the freedom. That you look at the title of it. The title, I don't give titles to my sermons. I never, I, I used to, but I just don't. They're all about Jesus. And for a while there, did you ever hear this story? Like I gave titles, you give titles to sermons and I'm like, that's dumb. No offense to anybody who does it. Because they're all about the same thing. <laughs> Jesus, salvation, etc. And so for, I don't know, three months in here, I, it was just Jesus and salvation, more about Jesus. Like I just sort of, like that was the mocking title. Then I just stopped giving titles to my sermons. Um, but when you look at the description, like on the YouTube video, it says we are the freedom that we have in Christ to sin again and again and again. What? Yeah. The freedom that we have in Christ. For God so loves us that the love and devotion and the following that we have for him, that we give to him, is of our own free will. It can be no other way. We cannot be coerced into following or loving the freedom that we have in Christ. Amen. Right? Paul says, thank God there's freedom in Jesus Christ. He is the answer. Within that boundaries, right, you, with, of that freedom is the exercise that, of our free moral agency. We have freedom in the love of Christ. Sounds crazy to sin again and again and again and again. This describes, this is the very essence of our free moral agency. It is not predetermined. We are not robots. And the love and the devotion that we give to him, the submission is real and of our own free will. Listen to that. The love that we share with Jesus the Christ, God through Jesus Christ, however you would like to word it, the love and devotion and submission that we give is of our own free will. If it is not, then it is not love and devotion and submission. It is something else that looks like it, but God, as our puppet master, is making us do that. I don't believe that. I believe, good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Daryl. I believe that the love and submission that we give to the Lord Jesus Christ is of our own free will. And with that liberty comes the riffraff, right? Isn't that a great saying about America? With the liberty comes the riffraff. That's a, I don't even remember who said that. But within true freedom, we, we, we don't examine that enough. And I tried to bring that across yesterday in the teaching. That this comes with the territory. Because we are devoting ourselves to Christ of our own free will. We are loving him of our own free will. That it doesn't just imply what comes with that is the ability to say, Lord, I love you. I'm devoting myself to you. Let your will be done. Oh, just hang on a second while I go over here to my computer and look at this porn. 
okay, I'm back, right? We have that freedom. We are not robots. We're still, the, the flesh is calling, man. The flesh is calling. How about that for a devotion? Flesh is calling. And we talk about, again, you're feeling it. The flesh needs fed. How about we go to the mirror? We go to our scriptures. We get on our knees. We pray, Lord, let your will be done. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. And regardless of the temptation of that besetting sin, he empowers us to put one foot in front of the other and take one step farther away from that old person that Paul talks about. The old person is dead. Let them die. Walk away from them. Woo! All right. Good morning, everybody. Oh, yes. Do we understand the God we serve? That's what this summer is all about. I spoke from Philippians 2, 1 to 11. This is true. What follows me? True. Yes. Truth. 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 And I, I, I keep saying, as, you, as we all, right, preach truth, we don't have to say, what is the truth? This is what happens so much. In churchianity today, what is the truth? Well, we have this over here and we have this. Let's figure it. Here is the truth. It is literally in black and white. We can preach this with confidence, knowing that it is the inspired word of God. And we can lay it out there without weaponizing it, without emotion even, but with conviction. And say, here is the truth, dear Christian. You now are challenged to do with it what you will. But here is the truth. We have an entire church structure that will aid you in understanding and in walking it out. What we just talked about. But here is the truth. you have got to figure this out. Get with the creator, yo. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Man, if you tune in for nothing, if you don't care about the teaching or preaching yesterday from Churchtown, get on that YouTube video and go toward the end when you see that man up there singing. I hope it was captured well. The volume evidently was down low. I didn't know that my volume had to be up. All, after all the years of doing this, the volume is not great. The lighting is not great. But here's where I need you because I ordered the new live streaming equipment. If anybody out there uses Mevo, M-E-V-O, it is coming. And to help me get it set up, to learn it, Bill, if you're there, we need folks in the church to learn it. It needs to be operated. Like while we're doing turning on the lights, I can operate it right here from my phone, no problem. But as I'm preaching and doing those sorts of things, that would be a little awkward. I'm excited, I'm excited. So anyway, if you do know that, we want to, we want to incorporate our external audio into the Mevo software so that we have high quality video, which is what this is supposed to be about, and high quality audio. So we shall see. Mevo! Mevo! Jeff Musser, um, amen. I thought you said a man. Amen, and remember the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, does not force himself upon us. That's one way to look at it. I kind of, I kind of, my pushback on that would be, let's not forget about conviction. I preached that yesterday as well. The provenient grace of God's Holy Spirit, right? The sovereignty of God's Holy Spirit. If you are person X off of the street and somehow, some way, I just wandered into this church, and you heard this message and you were like, oh my goodness, this is... This person is speaking to, and, and directly to me, and Holy Spirit is moved. 
right? Holy Spirit's not such a gentleman sometimes. He's like, hey, listen, 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 listen. Yeah, you can still walk away, but you're gonna walk away a little bit stumbling because the Lord just hit you over the head a few times with a brick. So that'd be my little bit of a pushback on that, but I understand the whole premise of free will. Here it is. We are free moral agents. In the Churches of God General Conference, we believe in this. Look in the We Believe book. Lots of good scriptures there to back this up. We believe that we are free moral agents. I'm just catching up. Oh, hold on. Yesterday, I spoke from 1 Samuel, where David led his men to a battle he didn't belong in. Because he left, their families were unprotected, taken captive. This is what happens when a person has no spiritual leadership. Oh, this is a great segue. Samuel was dead by this time, and a person isolates himself. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to hear that one. Good morning, Mr. Logan. I mentioned you earlier because I keep threatening to come down to the service Saturday night and haven't. Conviction happens by God's Holy Spirit. Remember, it's not our job to convict. It's not our job to convent, co condemn. What have we been called to do, brothers and sisters? Preach the word in season and out of season. I've learned that because the enemy would love for me to take personal biases, like take personal emotions, personal experience. And, and I mean, that, that's going to happen. But we have this. And we can preach that with conviction, knowing it is the truth of the word of God. What are you willing to do? Where's the cutoff? Right, Daryl? Just like I said, I'm willing to serve, Lord. I'm willing to serve, Lord. Let your will be done. Oh, yeah, hold on a second. Whether you're heading back in to the feed the flesh, sinful, or whether you're just like the Lord is saying, do this, do that, and you're like, eh, mm, uh, that can't be the Lord. That's not what I want. Right? All of the above. That's a powerful word. He, he, yeah. And just, Michelle, so many tenets of orthodoxy, so many tenets of orthodoxy are, I mean, they're so simple for human beings to understand. You know God wrote this. Now, they're a foot wide, so simple to understand. And of course, they're five miles deep that we're going to spend if we wanted to, every day of our walk, exploring them. It's just, human words escape you. It's brilliant, it's amazing, it's, you know, it's constructed by God. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's so cool. And I, I know I'm such a Bible geek, but I just love it, love it, I love it, love it. It's fascinating. And, and not just with the emotional and spiritual love of God, but I just find the Bible even rationally and, and um, from a liter literal, um, what's the word? Literary standpoint, a fascinating book. And, and then we look, believing that it is inspired by God's Holy Spirit and composed thus. You're amazing. Did you, did you read this? You're like finding to God, right? Did you read that? He's like, yeah, I read it, dork. So, oh! Didn't catch it, Pope. You're probably too late, Barbara. God bless you. Yep, we'll get it operating. I'm excited about that. We can stream to every platform all at one time. Uh, and and uh, it will supposedly does amazing things. So, yeah, right? They all gave their lives for some sort of crazy, hysterical, communal... Um, hallucination, right? No, they didn't. There was devotion. There was submission unto death. Very excited about it. Good morning. Good morning. I am convicted to come. I want to. 
I was talking about how it's such a joy to listen to over the course of the week. When I share, whether it be Logan or Dennis or Mark, or uh, when I, it doesn't necessarily mean I've just watched it. I tr first of all, I trust you. If it were somebody that I didn't know and trust, I would vet everything on my page. But I share it through the course of the week. This is part of my teaching, part of my devotional, part of my spiritual life, all of those things. I, I just really appreciate that very much. And the invitation to come to your service on Saturday nights, it's, you're a pastor, Logan, you know what's up, right? Especially Saturday nights, and I, but I want to go. What I want to do, I don't do. <laughs> I feel like Paul in Romans 7. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Let the rest up to God and his spirit. What do, you, know, you guys know me well enough. If we do what we're called to do and we actually trust God like we say we do, to do what he says and what he promises to do, things work out a lot better for we as individuals, for our families, for the church. It's just the truth. But we in our egotistical, selfish, broken natures, boy, we just can't let that go, can we? Right? But God, there are only 50 people here. He who I've placed in responsibility for small things will be in responsibility for many great things. If I can't trust you to plant a seed, a seed in a garden, how can you be trusted in the future with anything? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, but, but. And you, I, I do, I do this all the time. Like, I just, it's God's eye roll. Brian, I'm like, okay, I'll do what I'm called to do. And that's really like, those are literally my conversations with God. I'll do what I'm called to do. He's like, I know you will, but can you please just knock off all this junk? I'm like, okay. Dave Anderson. Dave, we need to write a special exam Pastor Susie, it's time that Pastor Susie is credentialed in the churches of God. What do we do for that? She's ministering right and left here at Churchtown to everybody. And you know one of our tenants, we don't want uncredentialed folks pastoring in the churches of God. Romans 8, 28, 29, God is in the business of making, oh yes, not in the business of making us comfortable, He's in the business of making us uncomfortable. It is naturally by the very essence and nature of God countercultural. How many times must we read that if you love the world, fill in the blank, you can't love God. Right? How many times must we read in Romans 7, 6? <clears throat> you will become a slave to whomever or whatever you give your allegiance, your devotion. Right? You can't have both. Brothers and sisters, there's a fundamental, maybe that's this week's message. I've preached it before, I'll preach it again. You can't have both. Like, so what does that mean? And people have, right? Mon uh, the, the monastic movement and those sorts of things. Uh, even uh, like when you look inside the Catholic Church and the priesthood and the sorts of the, the boundaries that are placed around them and every people have taken that. Does that mean I can't live in a house? I can't drive a car? I can't have any pleasure whatsoever? That's not what it means. It means that your heart cannot be divided and you must come to terms with that. It means that all of this stuff, even your home, your business, your car, your Harley Davidson, your weed whacker belongs to the world, not to me. And if that weed whacker of mine, Dave, gets run over by a semi today, because I left it sitting in the middle of the road because it wouldn't start and I accidentally threw it in front of a car. Could happen. I just move on without it. Because it is 
not part of God's kingdom. Dennis, you are a very good... As part of the sermon yesterday, if you listen, I said, and if you're sitting there thinking that you don't have any besetting sins and that you've got this all cover, covered, you might want to check... You might want to look up hubris <laughs> and pride because chances are you're sitting in a, own, sitting in a, own, your own, a pool of your own pride right now going, that none of this applies to me. Whoa! Yeah, you might want to check out your Christ, your spiritual hubris right there. Um, so, oh. <laughs> I love it. But were you, were you saying you might take her away from me? Could you come in and, and give an installation service for Pastor Susie here at Churchtown? I'm serious. Um, you know, after church yesterday, people stayed for about an hour and people were just talking. I mean, we have a two hour service. People come an hour early and they stay an hour late. And I'm not, well, maybe I am bragging. If I'm allowed to say something about that, this is a place where people come and that happens. And I'm just so happy about that. I don't need to be around. I have as many, there are, I have, see the language? There are as many associate pastors here in Churchtown as there are devoted followers of Jesus. And Pastor Susie is in here just loving people, making people bring, you know what I mean? It's just true. Oh my goodness, Bill, you're so legalistic. <laughs> Susie loves the Old Testament, the Lord's Prayer. Yes. These are the lessons that Brian must go through. Even my vacuum cleaner, the John Deere, the Harley Davidson, all belong to the kingdom of the world. Right? The world. in case he punches up his thread. Yes, Dennis, we've given in to that. And here's, I've shared with this, and we'll end with this. We never got the leadership. I was going to read Proverbs 21. Maybe we'll open up with leadership tomorrow. Maybe we'll finish with this reading and talk about it tomorrow. But we, we've gone, oh, I've loved hearing everything about your weekends. And keep on sharing everybody's uh, word that is being shared. If you've got it, Share it to me and I'll share it. If you got it on audio, if you've got it on video, like I said, so social media can be a cesspool as we know. It doesn't have to be in our little corner of social media. And between us all, there are hundreds, if not a couple thousand different people that can hear the word of God. And so let's do that. Let's do that. There's no reason not to do that. If you're in your sandbox and you're like, no, I don't want to, then that's a wrong kingdom mindset. Break out of it. Let's get the word out there. It does suck it up. But yeah, anyway, so yeah, we begin. Normally, this is what I've been doing because... We don't have a formal worship team. We don't have a formal this or that or anything. Uh, sound people, all of this stuff. Yesterday, I don't know if Bryn is still here, but she, I said, anybody, can anybody volunteer to do the PowerPoint in the soundboard? And Bryn stepped up, and I believe it was her first time doing it. So at the beginning, we talk about that. We get everything set up over there. We get everything set up over here. Sometimes, if we're, what, what, how we're singing, we ask people to come to the front. That's our worship team for the day. And, 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 and people will come to the front and help lead the music. Um, so we do all of that just very informally. This is what it's going to look like today. Then we go into prayer. 
and submit ourselves to the teaching of, of Lord Jesus and to his authority over all of this. And then we begin with worship and the word and spend time in the word and in prayer. And that usually goes for about an hour. We take time uh, in fellowship. And even those who are leaving at that time, more often than not, take time in fellowship. And that can go for 10 minutes or so. I mean, I would, it would go forever if I never called people back. I mean, it would go for a long time. When we do come back together, those who have chosen to stay, we, we enter into just a discussion, prayer service, sharing, anointing, praying, caring, talking, checking in, great stories about testimony, great stories of need, all of that stuff. It could go 20 minutes. It could go for another hour. Right? It just really has developed on its own that way. I was the one trying to keep a lid on everything. Like, no, we, I'm very conscious of the time and this and that. No, we're all big people here. We're all free moral agents. This is what it looks like. Invest as you will. And then afterwards, like I said, about an hour beforehand, people gather for time in the Word, sharing, prayer, all of that stuff, fellowship, and about an hour afterwards yesterday. We were leaving after one o'clock. People were here. So, this is cool. Just cool. It is a responsibility to use it well, right? We have freedom in Christ. Use your freedom well. One point five million people. Father God, thank you so much for this morning. We love you and we appreciate you. We really do. I mean, we, we say that. Let's not take that for granted, folks. Do you just we love you and we appreciate you. You are there. You are constant. I appreciate that. You're not going anywhere. I appreciate that. Lord, let my will be subject to yours today. Help me today to take one step farther away from the old man. He's dead. One step closer. One step closer to you as I grow as the, in the, at being the son of God that you see. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for this church. This church. For you. Thank you. We love you and we appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, gals, <clears throat> we will talk to you tomorrow. That's awesome. I, I don't know how you can even check that, but you have to show me how to check that. God bless you guys. Take care. Proverbs 21 maybe tomorrow. I'm, I'm heading into the Beatitudes on the radio program. It's still good news today. So we're going to be heading through the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7 on the radio. That's going to be fun too. That's going to be a lot of fun. Ten minutes at a time because it's still good news today. God bless you guys. Have fantastic Mondays. Make it a little mowing done today, Dave. <laughs>